nerd dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 29 in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role-playing. And in our previous video, we had upgraded Ruby on our Rails application from 3.1.2 to 3.1.3. Um, and in our Christmas episode, Nerd Christmas 2022, Ruby 3.2 released, we installed Ruby 3.2 on our system. So uh, slight apologies for essentially the last video was uh, of no value to our application. So we're, we installed 3.1.3 and now we're immediately going to 3.2.0, so uh, it's kind of like Yoda. At an end, your reign is, and not brief enough it was. So we're going to go now and upgrade our application to 3.2. It's not really, like, in terms of product value, it's not the highest priority, but uh, in terms of timing and um, relevance to YouTube users, it is a... Um, something that I think will be valuable in that regard. So it's not necessarily the, the product's value that is driving this. It's more the um, viewership's value and the value to the um, uh, of the these broadcasts at, in videos as videos themselves rather than the, um, the product. So we've already got it from our previous video, Ruby 3.2. Uh, installed on our system so we can see we're in 3.2 um, if we look in the directory here we're in the nerddice.com directory so Ruby 3.2.0 is our default but when you go into the directory we've got this dot uh, Ruby version file that overrides what um, is being done uh, kind of at a system level when you're choosing your Ruby versions. We can look at our previous commit to kind of see where things need to be modified here. So this is when we upgraded from uh, 3.1.2 to 3.1.3. So we've got the GitHub workflows, we've got our Ruby version, We've got our gem file and then our gem file dot lock. So we will make similar changes here. So our gem file dot lock will get updated automatically. I might update the bundled width there before running bundle install just to kind of um, get that updated to the latest version here but Ruby version so this is going to be 3.2.0 oh look all of the places I need to modify are still open in my editor how convenient make this 3.2 I should check out a branch here what we named the last one all right so we've got that I wonder what happens if, if that it in and of itself was No, still using 3.1, so I'll have to use the the use command here. Ruby version, gem file, gem file dot lock. So we will RVM use 2.4.1, our application is using 2.3.7. Let's see if I 
am able to update it like this. And then run a bundle install. Sometimes these native extensions can take a, a bit to install. I'll pause and let this finish, and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so our bundle install has completed successfully. The, the only thing that took a while was that uh, boot snap with native extensions. Um, in older versions of Ruby and Rails, Nokogiri used to take forever, uh, but um, either the, um, I think it's still in the gemfile.log, we'll search for it. Take a look at our status now. So our gemfile.log has been changed. We'll take a look at the diff. So GitHub workflow, we've changed our Ruby version has changed, our gem file Ruby version has changed, and then, um, so yeah, Nokogiri is in the um, gem file. The, um, yeah, and then, so, hasn't been a lot of change with regard to gem versions see whether the authorities have any issues with our changes. We have a future backlog story coming up where we'll modify how we do RuboCop to um, allow for um, picking up these um, new cops enabled by default. Um, and then that will wind up greatly reducing the footprint of our rubocop.yaml file. Um, so that is coming up. And now we'll else test system test. Uh, I'm going to pause this again uh, to allow this to run just because it's um, the system tests uh, take a few seconds. So. All right, so our tests have completed without any failures, but there were, as you can see here, a ton of deprecation warnings that came up. It's not uncommon to see deprecation warnings when you upgrade your Ruby version, especially changing a minor version, uh, patch versions, you don't often see those things introduced, but uh, minor versions or major versions you'll see deprecation warnings and if you haven't fixed the previous versions deprecation warnings they will stop wor working in the next version all of our um, warnings are related to rack 2.2.4 so let's take a look at rubygems.org and see if there's a later version of this and we can see that there is rack 3.0.3 that was released in December um, 26, 2022. Uh, so we'll um, do that. Uh, let's take a look at what our gem file says about Rack. All right, so Rack isn't in and of itself named in our gem file. So I think we can just do a bundle update rack and see where that gets us. And 2.2.5. So we've got a, a major version constraint on 
rack that isn't, at least in this version of Rails, um, allowing us to install rack three. So let's see though if that um, solves for the deprecation warnings. So we'll rerun our tests here. Um, and I'll just um, kind of, if we see the deprecation warnings, we'll, we'll know pretty quickly. And they, they appear to be gone. So I think that solves that issue. Um, I will, I guess I'll pause and let the, the full suite run again just to be extra sure. All right, so our test suites have both finished successfully. All of the dep deprecation warnings are cleared. Let's make sure that we can still run our development server here. Actually, I need to get rid of this terminal because it's still running the older version of Ruby. Should be good. You can see that it installed Foreman kind of on a just in time basis there. Now I should be able to go to our application. Log in and do everything else that we need. Log out. So our application, at least from a smoke test standpoint, uh, that combined with the, the browser test that we do in our system test, I think we're in um, pretty good shape to say that we're confident that our application will work with Ruby 3.2. We can now Take a look at our, our, our diff. We've already um, taken a look at the diff. The only other change that we'd see would be that patch change to rack, which we can see here. Uh, everything else is the same as when we looked at it earlier in the video. So we can do git add. write our commit message here. I'll pause and do that. All right, we've got our commit message here. We will push to our new branch, which will trigger a build. While we're doing that, let me take a look at what we've got in terms of our branches. So the action is kicked off and queued. Let's take a look at our branches. We can prune out that feature. Three point one point three branch from both our local and our uh, remote. So we'll do that while we're and then to um, to delete the remote branch. The easiest way here is just colon git push origin colon and then your branch name. You could do also pu git push dash d origin and then your branch name, but um, it's I think easier once you know that that's what's going on there. So. Uh, we take another look at our action. It hasn't failed right out of the gate, so we'll pause and let that complete. All right, so our build has completed successfully. We go to our code here and take a look at the upgrade. Sometimes um, you want to double check that um, the checks have passed. 
I, I had one situation where the um, everything was green and then coverage coveralls was was red because the code coverage went down and it showed it as a successful build in GitHub Actions but not there. So uh, everything looks good. We can open up our pull request. And I'm going to merge this from the command line. So back in our terminal here, git, we'll make sure that we've got our branch name copied, check out main, git merge, git push. And that will show the pull request has merged. It will and then I'll close the issue. retroactively assign myself. We'll throw in technical excellence label. We'll make this part of our initial release milestone. And let's see here. Our project that moves to done. We don't have any issues yet. Taking a look at our um, upcoming backlog, we'll go next five videos here, hopefully. Uh, refactor Tailwind, make devise paranoid, um, add contributing and README um, updates, and then remove Rubocop YAML to enable new cops. And then we'll probably do a retrospective, and then we'll start on uh, some backlog population, wireframing design, those sorts of things upcoming. Uh, we'll end here. In the event that the build fails for any reason, I'll just add an addendum to the video, but otherwise we'll see you in the next one. Ruby on Rails 7 is out. Code along on a guided journey through the Rails 7 Getting Started Guide and beyond with test-driven development. There has never been a better time to learn Ruby on Rails. Hit the ground running with the newest version. Go to statelesscode.com slash getting started with Rails 7 to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf. So it's not uncommon to see deprecation warnings when you, I'm out of sync here.